How's it going, everybody, and welcome to Just Nobody's Podcast. I'm your host, Ryan. And I'm your host, Daniel. Today, we're doing a podcast. Woo. If you're new to the channel, please hit the subscribe button and also hit the like button. Okay? The like button is the one with the thumb. Yeah. Okay? Going up. Right. So it's important that you hit that. The one pointing up. Right. Only. With the one with the fingernail on the thumb. I don't know. Is there a fingernail in it? I don't think so. But I do know when you click it, there is fireworks. Yeah. So if you want some fireworks in your life, some excitement, hit the like button. Get that firework booming. Press it. And also comment what you want us to talk about next week. As you can see throughout this video, there's comments of suggestions that you guys wanted us to talk about this week. So we're talking about it. So let's get into it. Do you know how people are seeing a parallel universe? What do you mean? So I saw a video by the Thought Police, and he actually found a way to see into a parallel universe, essentially confirming that Mandela effects are real. Which Mandela effects. So he uses an old Verizon cell phone and he uses a camera on it. And whenever he uses it, it reveals a Mandela effect. So when he looks at the Chick fil A logo, he's using his cell phone, right? This old cell phone camera. And whenever he looks at the word chick, it's spelled C H I C. And when he takes the phone away, the logo is spelled C H I C K. And it confirms the Mandela effect that we all remember it as C H I C. But now it's changed to C-H-I-C-K. Wait, what the heck? And get this, when he looks at the Febreze logo, when he puts the camera up to it, it's actually spelled the way we all used to remember it. F-E-B-R-E-E-Z-E. -E -E. But then when he moves the camera away, it's F-E-B-R-E-Z-E, -E, which makes no sense. Basically confirming the Mandela effect about Febreze. So this is real? Well, it seems like it could be. And when he looks at the Monopoly logo with this phone, the Monopoly man actually has a monocle over his eye. But when he moves the phone, the monocle disappears. And the Monopoly man's no longer wearing the monocle. Okay, I need to see this phone in person yeah i mean it's an old verizon phone right like a it looks like a blackberry you uh -huh. know what i mean and it's just a really crappy camera but it looks like it could be real i mean who knows though that's freaky dude this is why mandela effects just freak me out do you know the theory about who's gonna be the next black panther well if it follows the comics it's gonna be shuri right yeah but what if i told you that the new wakanda forever movie may actually have two black panthers in it so it's gonna be shuri and who else okay so recently a lego set confirmed that shuri will be one of the black panthers and we know at the end of the trailer we see a black panther with gold accents like on the wrist and the arm and the legs and in the first Black Panther, we see how Shuri actually makes a gold necklace for T'Challa with gold accents on the suit. But T'Challa said, like, that's too flashy. I don't want that. But Shuri really liked the gold necklace and really liked the gold suit. Right. And the color of the necklace dictates what's the color of the suit. So T'Challa had a silver necklace and he had silver accents throughout the suit. And Killmonger had a gold necklace and he had gold accents throughout the suit. And in the Lego set, we see Shuri will be wearing the gold necklace and she'll have gauntlets on her arms, which we see on the suit. So who's going to be the other Black Panther? So there's a theory that Nakia will actually be one of the next Black Panthers because of one photo. So recently, Recently, Marvel posted a photo of the new Black Panther from Wakanda Forever, and it has a silver necklace with a different mask, showing that it's not the same Black Panther that we see at the end of the trailer. And we know Nakia can fight really well, and there's a rumor that she's going to actually be carrying T'Challa's baby. So it makes sense that Nakia will wear the Black Panther suit in honor T'Challa. And during Comic-Con, whoever's like the main character or the Black Panther always stands to the left of the director when they're announcing the movie. And this year at Comic-Con, Lupita actually stood to the left of Ryan Coogler, the director, showing that she's the main character of the movie. It is weird how Lupita was standing closest to the director and it wasn't Shuri. I mean, you would think that if Shuri's the next Black Panther and the only Black Panther, that she would be standing close to the director. Right. But not Nakia. Yeah, I think they're I think they're hiding something. Yeah. Because it doesn't make sense, right? The gold suit at the at the end of the trailer. And then the, the teaser poster is a silver and black suit. Right. Do you know what the safest and most dangerous states are? All I know is that I feel like California is definitely probably going towards the most dangerous side of things. So according to World Population Review, these are the top five safest states to live in in the US. So number five is Wyoming, number four is Utah, and number three is Minnesota. Okay. So number two is Vermont, and the safest place to live in the U.S., is actually Maine. Knowing the safest states are great and all, but I feel like knowing the most dangerous states probably can help save some lives. Okay, so for the most dangerous states, number five is Texas, number four is Arkansas, number three is Florida, and number two is Louisiana. But the number one most dangerous place to live is Mississippi. Mississippi? I, I would have never thought that. Yeah, that was the last place I would have thought would be the most dangerous. I was thinking more like, California, New York, or something like, you know? That's what I would have thought, but Mississippi. Wow, that sucks. <laughs> Okay, but moving on, there's a crazy Stranger Things theory that number eight is coming back. I know the character number eight got a lot of hate from, like, the fans, but her powers were pretty interesting. Right, and they even mentioned her in season four, and we know that her powers, she actually can manipulate people's brains to make them see something that's not actually there. But this is exactly what Vecna is able to do to his parents and all the victims he's killed. So there's a theory that the only way to beat Vecna will involve eight coming back. Her powers are very similar to Vecna. Exactly, and Vecna pretty much displays three different types of powers. 
powers, telepathic powers, telekinetic powers, and being able to manipulate people's brains. And since Eleven lost the battle in Season 4, it would make total sense for Eight to come back so they team up against Vecna together. I mean, they wouldn't mention Eight's name in Season 4 if she wasn't going to be coming back for the next season. Yeah, I mean, I feel like she's got to come back. There's definitely a reason behind it because, one, fans didn't really like Eight, right? And they know that. Yeah. So they wouldn't write that in in Season 4 if she, there wasn't, like, a bigger purpose for her in the future. Right. It can't be just a coincidence that Vecna literally has both of their powers combined. Yeah. I mean, there's something to that. Right. Okay, but there's a crazy new theory about Eddie. It's crazy how Eddie's become so popular. It's amazing. Yeah, and in season four, we really never know what age Eddie is. We just know that he's failed his senior year twice, so we could assume that he's around 20. Right. But in the final episode, when Eddie's uncle is putting up missing posters for Eddie, it actually says on the poster that his age is 17. How does that even make sense? So I saw an article by Screen Rant, and we know that Eddie died in 1986 because that's when season four takes place but if you look at the location that eddie died in he died in the upside down and the upside down is stuck in 1983 the same exact year that eddie would be 17 and we now know the upside down has merged with the real world so it's possible that vecna is using the mind flare to make everyone think it's 1983 again because now the mind flare is able to enter the real world and the duffer brothers even said the fact that the upside down is stuck in 1983 is gonna play a big role in season five and this could possibly set up a time travel story for season five the little details are so crazy right and we okay we know the duffer brothers like to do that they put those little details in for a reason i mean it's plus two how you said like season five the whole idea between 1983 is going to be like a big role in season five yeah so that would definitely spark the whole like 1983 being important if that all connects exactly and the duffer brothers even said they don't even they didn't want to even show that in season four they said they wanted to wait till season five to even reveal that oh then you know it's definitely a big deal right all right guys thank you so much for watching this week's podcast if you made it this far please hit the like button it's this one over here somewhere but it's the one with the <laughs> thumbs up okay and also comment what you want us to talk about next week as you guys saw throughout this video we use your guys suggestions so we would love to use your suggestions and we'll use it for next week so we'll see you guys tomorrow on tiktok and we'll see you guys next week on apple Podcasts, spotify and youtube on friday we'll see you on the tiki talk god bless you guys see ya love ya